What if I told you, with peaks come valleys. This is 30 for 30, the rise and fall of Dan Hartzell. Well, you know, when I was younger, I, I knew I was going to be a star. Uh, and, and whether it was, uh, you know, performing at the, the Super Bowl or performing at the uh, Australia Laundromat, I knew somehow, some way, I was going to be a star. And I knew that at an early age. When I met Dan, I, I didn't think he'd be a star at all. I mean, he drank way too much Mountain Dew, uh, very average golfer, uh, has a lot of backtrack when he's singing, and, and no real dance moves. But, but what he did on stage, at times, definitely impressed me. At the beginning, yeah, I thought he was going to be a star. And then, you know, all the stuff happened with the, the, the Beyonce stuff, and that kind of answered the question there. You know, when we first got together, it was it was a culmination of, of different ideas, different backgrounds. So like I knew right away that I was probably gonna have to take it by the reins. Uh, the peak of his career was that first Siggy Awards. That first performance he had, he really he really just shined. Oh, I definitely think his cover of Britney Spears. Uh, I can't remember which track it was, but uh, he really got the audience going, and I could kind of see his ego getting bigger at that moment. That, that first performance, I mean, if I'm on America's Got Talent, he's going all the way through the finals. The way he just didn't use his voice, honestly, I would say he, he was more or less a nine out of 10. I was waiting for that next, that next step. Well, after the first performance, the feedback was insane. The cars, the money, the women, uh, it just, it was too much. Um, I had to go under an alias moved actually with my uncle and auntie in Bel Air for a while and uh, it, it just was too much and I just wanted some peace and quiet. But what came up quicker than Dan's rapidly growing ego was his fall from stardom. Um, you know, when you go out there and you do uh, Queen B in a performance, you, you need to unleash the Queen B. And what he did was de-leash the Queen B. It was awful. Oh, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Someone's got to say it. It wasn't committed. It didn't show up. It didn't take his vocals seriously. It didn't come to rehearsal. Who doesn't come to rehearsal? I knew a wise guy who was uh, my cousin once. His name's Alan Iverson. He said practice. Just because he used practice and didn't show up, Hartzell didn't show up, and he thought he could use the same excuse. I'm not cool with that. Dan Hartzell choked harder than the Warriors last year. It was not good. And I think that was, you know, he was, he was on his way to rock bottom. I could just tell looking at him when he was doing the I Want It That Way, our, our big song, big hit, uh, his heart just wasn't in it. And you just saw this little decline, more like that. Um, I had called Beyonce to make sure that it was okay to do Single Ladies, and, and it, was, it, was, it was really a tough song choice because, as everyone knows, I'm, I'm not a single lady. Put a ring on it and I think a culmination of, of different things my agent had told me that I was going to get a hundred grand and it turned out it was a, a candy bar but what he should have done differently was not stand us up the night at the Bears Den Dan called us a couple months before the Siggies and said hey we're going out to the Bears Den we're going to karaoke work on our stuff for the Siggy Awards you know kind of like a, a live performance is rate the crowd the thought of going solo had been crossing my mind earlier uh, during our performances. And then the night that um, I called the guys and got them to the Bears Den um, and sang Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On. We showed up. Dan was already singing by himself. And I did it and I pointed right at their souls with my eyes and said, I don't need you. When he went solo, I knew he was going to flop. First thing in my mind, and I don't know when I said, "What's this guy doing?" When Hartzell left, it was it was awful. The way that he left was like uh, LeBron when he went to Miami. I knew there was no doubt in my mind he was going to be a failure because he can't do it without the other four. So what comes next? Redemption. He has one opportunity to come back, and that is if he comes back to the band, he has an opportunity. But if he doesn't come back, he's done. Well, I, I don't think I've ever really not been able to come back. I think it's it's kind of, uh, you know, I've always hit that fastball down the middle out of the park, and, and the second Siggy's was a, just a curveball. With me leading the band uh, the way that I did, 
if those guys wanted to put their solo careers aside or get back from the hiatus, I would be willing to give it one final performance. I'm ready to see this band try to do something crazy and I really need to see us get back together. So, members, there's five of us for a reason. If I never see him again, I would be happy. I just want to tell my fans, coming back stronger, and I will give you the performance of a lifetime, I promise that.